This is a short video I'm making about this uh, mandolin that I've just finished restoring. Uh, it's a vintage stridente instrument and um, you can never really tell when these were made but I guess kind of 19 teens maybe something like that. Um, when I first got this one and it was all dirty and worn and stuff um, I didn't think an awful lot of it. I thought it was a bit plain. And it certainly hasn't got any bling on it, you know, this, it's not all covered in rubber, rubber pearl and that sort of stuff. Um, but it's cleaned up really, really nice and I'm, I'm, I've changed my opinion of it completely. I think it's lovely now. Um, so basic construction, rosewood back as usual, uh, as you can see. Uh, spruce top, there is a some kind of burr wood pick guard inlay on there and the rosette around the sound hole is uh, like a, a marquetry herringbone pattern you probably can't see it on the webcam but it's it's subtle and it's nice and uh, even the purfling around the edges here uh, it's, it's nine ply uh, banding around the edge and um, you almost need a magnifying glass to actually work that out. It's, it's as I say, it's it's not bling and in your face. It's subtle, and um, and it's well made, and, and I like it. So there we go. But you know, you can make your own mind up. Um, Work-wise, I haven't done an awful lot to this one. It was it was in quite good nick when I got it. There's no cracks on the top or back. Um, there is an old repair between two of the ribs on the back which seems perfectly sound uh, that predates from, from when I had it um, fingerboard has obviously been re-leveled and refretted and it's now playing with a, a very nice low action that's just over a millimeter at the 12th fret so combined with with lightweight strings that's that makes it really easy to play um, it's it's a matter of personal preference really but this one's quite comfortable at least for me to play because the neck has kind of more of a modern uh, sort of American style uh, mandolin profile um, rather than uh, some of the classical bowl backs which have a, a very narrow sort of triangular neck which, which almost comes to a point at the nut end and a very very narrow nut so this is more what I'm used to. If you're used to playing sort of more bluegrass style mandolins, then, then you should feel more at home on this one than perhaps some of the other classical ones. But, you know, it's, it's what you get used to. Um, there's a couple of defects on this one still, cosmetic stuff that you should know about. There's a little mark on the back here, which probably doesn't show up on the webcam, I don't know. It didn't show up on the photos either. I can just about see that. Um, it's like a little plug mark. Um, it's probably some kind of defect in the wood that they fill in the factory or something like that. It's not something I'd put there. Um, it's just a little darker than the rest of the back. That's, that's how it shows up. And on the neck, um, there's a little wee scar here um, where I had to take a small bit of the, uh, the veneer off the neck because the veneer had separated from the, uh, from the neck underneath just at that spot. So I, I, I had to get a bit off so I could glue it down properly um, but again can you see that there's a wee scar about here somewhere didn't show up in the photos either <laughs> um, so other than that um, what else do I need to say about this ah yeah um, it's got an, a pretty good neck angle on it this one um, most of these old bowl backs, you, you sort of end up running out of room for the bridge uh, if you try and get a low action on them. This one I actually had to, to put a new uh, bone saddle on top of the bridge because the, the original had been cut too low. Um, so that, that makes a change. Um, but basically it means there's plenty of room at the bridge end for adjustment. So um, I mean, you couldn't really take it any lower than it is anyway. But um, it's, it's nice to know that... Um, you have actually got room for a bridge on this one, unlike some of the bowl backs you get. 
sound-wise. Um, as my dad said, it rings like a bell. Uh, it's got that real long sort of sustain that you get with these rosewood backed ball backs, and it just goes on ringing and ringing. Um, so it's it's a very it's a different kind of sound from uh, from the bluegrass mandolins if that's what you're used to, and I guess suitable for a, a different kind of music. But yeah, I, I like this one. It's it's fun to play around with and. Um, People seem to like it, people seem to like the sound of it, so there we go. Um, well, we, let's just mess around with a few chords and, and I'll try and show you what it sounds like. put a new set of uh, what do we call them, a new tone uh, nickel wound strings on this one um, when I originally set this up I put an old set of Thomas Stuckinfeld strings on and um, they sounded blooming lovely actually a really much better bass response down on those strings, although having said that um, listening back to some of the recordings I've made of this one, um, uh, the bass comes over much more strongly than I expected it to. Um, kind of when you're sitting on top of it, you tend to hear the treble more, whereas was sat down in front of it, um, you get a slightly more balanced sound and, and, and stronger bass. But um, as the Thomas Stuck strings are sort of nearly 30 quid a set, I'm not going to put a new set of those on to, uh, to sell it. So, uh, <laughs> new tones are still a cut above kind of the, the bog standard strings, uh, the handmade here in the UK, and, and, and I, I like them. But um, if you really want to go all out, get some flat rounds. <laughs> so, um, let's demonstrate the sound some more. Tremolo, as you'd expect, sounds nice, and it sounds nice in the upper registers, particularly. <laughs> 